Good morning, everyone. I'm Ted Henderson. I'm the founder of Capital Bells. Uh, I used to be a congressional staffer until my boss, Dale Kildee, retired at the end of last term. And I started building Capital Bells, which is a, a mobile app to track what Congress is doing in real time and also to be able to share our opinions with our, our friends and rally support for or against legislation. And I wanted to come talk to you guys just for a couple of minutes about how legislative data and transparency can actually be used to make powerful, cool apps, which I might be a little biased about. Um, so my theory is that apps are, and all this data can actually be used to help Congress do its job. Some of this data is completely open transparent. Some of this data is technically public, but really hard to get at. So like the first data that I use in my app were the data from the clocks on Capitol Hill, which buzz in different weird patterns to let people know what's happening. Is there, is there a vote that's starting? Is there a quorum call? Are we going into recess? And it turned out that there wasn't an API for, for these vote alerts. There were, wasn't an RSS feed, but all the clocks uh, are actually radio controlled clocks. So we pick up the radio signals that control the clocks so we can turn it into English and send it up to the cloud and give you push notifications. So instead of having to be there on the hill to hear the buzzes and try to figure out what they mean, you just get a push notification that says the votes are starting. And you can open up the app, you can find out what the bill is, which is from open data we get from the clerk's office, their XML feed, so we can tell you which bill that we're on and uh, tweets that follow the fl floor to tell what's going on, you know, minute by minute. And then the uh, other sort of supposed to be public information, but it's really not open, are if any of you watched C-SPAN before, you, know, you see how like there are the yays and nays and you sh see how the vote's going. So I kind of get that on the app, but I actually have to take screenshots of C-SPAN, use something called optical character recognition, and be able to kind of guess what are these blobs in low resolution? Is it a is it a 82? Is it a one? And then be able to kind of show a member of Congress, you know, here's how the vote's going. So I can kind of tell, you know, how much time do I have to get down there, or you know, is this bill going to pass or not? But the result is kind of bringing all these disparate data streams together. We have an app that's been very popular on Capitol Hill. There's over 15,000 mobile users. Hundreds of them are members of Congress, thousands of them are staffers, the press gallery uses it, and lobbyists use it, and in addition to a lot of political junkies like probably a lot of you are. The other side to it is, of course, that transparency means that it's a chance for, you know, it's a chance for us to keep track of what's going on in Congress, but also to be able to, you know, engage our friends and maybe hold Congress accountable or representatives accountable for what they're doing ostensibly for us. So the Capitol Bells web app, which I launched last month, is sort of a social network for, for Congress. Lets you pretty much share your position on bills. Kind of describe it in your own language, why you're in support of it, why you're opposed to it. And it translates all our interactions into sort of yay and nay positions that we can compare to a congressman's official record of co-sponsorships and votes. So since launching it last month, we've connected over 20,000 people to open data on the Sunlight Foundation's Congress API, and hopefully can continue connecting more people. You know, you know, basically, my theory is that if we can get more data, we can create more powerful apps doing more useful things. So really, I would like to open up as much as possible of what's going on in our legislator, you know, right now in real time. Uh, is, is there anyone here from Granicus? You, you stand up. So, like Granicus, you know, they they have this House Live video feed, which you know lets you kind of monitor the House floor. Um, you know, you can have a, if you have a video open. But they also get this. They have a special deal to get this awesome data that has all those live tallies that I have to OCR. So and they don't they don't open that up, but you know they obviously get it. And if they did, there's really cool stuff we could do with it. So you guys should ask them to to open up that data. Um, you know, closed captioning we can use to tell not just you know that there's a debate going on, but who's speaking and what they're speaking about in a digital form. Uh, amendment data, oftentimes we don't actually know, have the real amendment data until after the amendments already been voted on, especially in an open rule. We don't see it until after they've already decided on it. 
And then committees. Committees, you know, you really have to be in a committee to find out what's going on. It's like, what if we could get all of this data? You know, we could actually sort of have sort of this virtual digital representation of Congress that we can, you know, check into at any time and we can interact with and we can interact with our community about and maybe do some constructive stuff. Um, so that's it. Uh, email me if you have any questions and thank you very much.